This is the Valley Today. We have local breaking news out of Detroit Lakes. An escapee from Becker County is now back behind bars. 25 year old Alexander Robaro Bemidji was arrested just before 1030 last night after six hours on the run. Robar ran out of a courtroom yesterday afternoon after being sentenced to nearly two years in prison on an earlier escape charge. Deputies, police and state troopers scrambled to find him and he was finally located in Detroit Lakes and arrested without incident. He's now in the Becker County Jail and will be facing more charges because of this latest escape. Now Robar had posted bail on that previous charge. That's why he was not in custody during yesterday's court hearing. This morning, police are investigating a stabbing on Fargo's south side that sent one person to the hospital. It happened just after six last night in the 1000 block of Page Drive. That's a few blocks north of the Applebee's neighborhood on 13th Avenue. Police say one person is being treated for injuries which are not considered life threatening. Officers say the two people involved do know each other. There has been no word this morning from police about the extent of the victim's injuries or what led up to that stabbing or if anyone has been arrested. We are also tracking a story out of Moorhead, where police are working to confirm the identity of a man's body who was pulled from the Red River. A group of kids discovered that body near the shoreline in the 1000 block of 7th Street North around 1230 yesterday afternoon. Police say it appears the body was in the water for a long time. Personal property found on that body is giving police an idea of who it is, but the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office is now working to make a positive identification. Just about 603 on this Thursday morning. Let's get a check of that forecast. Sun up nice high and bright at this hour, Nathan. That's right, Jordan. A nice bright sunrise, but we are seeing still some fog here or some haze uh, in Fargo at this hour from our Coleman Auto Tower cam. But by and large, we're quiet for us uh, on this uh, Thursday morning. We are still watching the radar. A few spots at this point. Look at this off toward Beltrami County. The lower Red Lake did have a shower just move overhead. That has now cleared the lake, and I think now that that's heading off toward Black Duck, your chances of rain at the Red Lakes today is done. Now look out toward the west. We've got another band of some storms making its way toward Bismarck. Some a lot of lightning with that one. Some heavy rain there. I expect that to fizzle out, weaken quite a bit before it gets to our western neighborhoods, but we still can see some lingering showers and some clouds pushing into our region from that band of rain. Now, so marginal risk of severe weather right now is basically where the storms are occurring as we speak. From Dickinson, you got the slight risk of severe weather, but our extreme western neighborhoods, that marginal risk level one out of five on the severe weather risk scale. Visibility still, uh, well, not good, not good at all there in Oaks. Zero visibility at this hour. So that's dense fog. Make sure if you do encounter that fog southeast North Dakota, slow it down. Take it slow, use those low beams so other drivers can see you in the fog there. Eight mile visibility in Fargo as you saw some haze there over town. Uh, temperatures though were in the 60s for most everybody. 61 with Dina, 62 Bedette in some of the cooler spots. 67 out the door this morning in Fargo, 64 for our friends in Grand Forks. Hour by hour shows those clouds pushing in from the west and take note of the wind. It's going to be out of the northeast today. The front that gave us those storms yesterday up toward the north has now pushed toward the south. So now we've got a north wind for us, which will make things not quite as humid today as what we saw yesterday. But of course, lunchtime, there's the stuff moving in from the west, some rain showers possible out toward the far west, and then the afternoon, the heat, the humidity of the day, watching for some storms developing there in the afternoon along that front, mainly south of I-94, south of Highway 10, and that chance continues through the dinner time hour, 70s, 80s for highs today. After sunset, though, I think those uh, that the sun will be gone, so the heat and the energy for those storms will fizzle out as well. Expecting a nice, calm, quiet night, Jordan, after that storm chance to the south today. Okay, a few things to watch out for, Nathan. Thank you this morning. It is now 6.05. We have breaking news out of the UK this morning. British media outlets are reporting that Prime Minister Boris Johnson has agreed to resign, ending an unprecedented political crisis over his future. Johnson had rejected calls by some of his cabinet to step down in the wake of an ethics scandal. He is resigning now after more than 40 ministers quit his government and told him to go. It's 12 years in prison for an 18 year old for his role in a shooting that sent a West Fargo boy to the hospital with a gunshot wound. That six year old was hit in the head by a stray bullet back in March of 2021 in what police say was a robbery gone wrong. Germond Johnson Jr. was sentenced yesterday on federal charges of interference with commerce by threats and violence and a Hobbs Act robbery. Those charges are related to drug offenders who use firearms while committing a drug crime. 
20 year old CJ Carruthers was sentenced in February to 10 years behind bars for that same incident. Police say he and Johnson were robbing a drug dealer when Carruthers fired his gun. The other guy then returned fire. That bullet went through a house and hit a boy. That child survived. A Princeton, Minnesota gym teacher is now facing criminal charges for hitting an eight year old boy in the face with a hockey stick. You'll see it happen right here. It was all captured on surveillance camera back in March. The boy tossed the stick to the side. The teacher picks it up and flings it back at the student right there. And then you see the student lean back as he gets hit in the face. The child's tooth was knocked out. Kim Neubauer, the teacher, was put on leave after the incident and is now accused of third degree assault. It's decision day for the fate of a Fargo South High School teacher. The school board meets at 730 this morning to decide whether or not they should fire Kevin Kennedy. He was suspended without pay on April 6 after the district received at least six complaints about him that he crossed boundaries with students and created an uncomfortable learning environment. New documents say that Kennedy admitted to school officials that he asked a student if they take and send nude photographs. He also says he told a student they should know that the only reason another student invited them over at three in the morning was for sex. Documents also say the testimony and evidence presented at the executive discharge hearing showed that Kennedy engaged in unprofessional personal conversations with students, including texting a girl that he would have her kiss a boy during a play to make the teen's boyfriend jealous. Kennedy was also accused of touching students inappropriately without permission and being overly invested in student relationships. Now, last month, the Fargo School Board did vote unanimously to fire Kennedy for cause based on immoral conduct, conduct unbecoming to the position of a teacher, and gross inefficiency that Kennedy failed to correct after multiple written notices. Today, if the findings are approved by the school board, Kennedy will, will be officially discharged and will not receive any pay or benefits as of his suspension date, which was early April. The district will also be required to report Kennedy's discharge to the Education Standards and Practice Board. The FBI has a disturbing warning for parents this morning. An alarming number of kids and teens are falling victim to a new type of Internet scam, sextortion. The Valley Today's J.C. Dodd joins us live in studio with what parents need to know about what's happening to their kids online. Good morning, J.C. Good morning, Jordan. That's right. It is a troubling trend online. Predators targeting children, building a relationship with them, and then extorting them for sexually explicit images. The FBI calls it sextortion, and it can happen anywhere and to anyone. Just last month, a St. Paul man pleaded guilty to victimizing more than five hundred young girls in an extensive sextortion scheme. In May, a 24 year old Twin Cities middle school paraprofessional was charged in another sextortion scheme. And in April, a Minnesota substitute teacher was sentenced to 40 years in prison for sextortion. I spoke with an FBI special agent based in Minneapolis who says the scheme starts out the same way. Communication on any website, app or game when young people believe they're chatting with someone their age who is interested in a relationship or offering something valuable. The predator will then use threats, gifts, money, flattery or lies to get a young person to send a sexually explicit picture or video. After the criminal has one or more videos or pictures, they threaten to show friends or family or even threaten violence to get the child to send more pictures. I'm also a mother, so I'm not naive to think that our youth are going to make mistakes and they're going to fall prey to this. Once the pattern begins, the shame, fear and confusion children feel when they're caught in the cycle often prevents them from asking for help or reporting the abuse. Now, if you're thinking that wouldn't happen to my child coming up on the fast track to seven, I'll tell you how the victim says there's one thing all sextortion um, victims have in common and those conversations parents need to be having. All right, we'll stick around for that later on the show. JC, this morning, thank you. And there is a new crisis call line that's starting up next week. It will just be three digits to remember. Starting on Saturday, July 16th, you can call 988 for mental health help and suicide response as well. It's the new national system, but calls will be answered locally. In our area, First Link out of Fargo will be answering calls from anyone with that 701 area code, as well as the 17 counties near us that have a 218 area code. Still ahead on the Valley today, art and anxiety. Some say special creations in hospitals may help with healing. 
And this morning, what could help in feeling a little bit better? That nice bright sunrise we have. Take a look in the Metro. Nathan Hopper is in with what we need to know for how the Thursday will shape out.